Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, June 29th, 5.50 a.m. Central Time as I speak here. December corn futures up a half cent at 6.59 and a half last trade. November soybeans up seven and a quarter at 14.69 and three quarters. September Chicago wheat up 13 and a quarter at 9.49 and a quarter. September Kansas City wheat up 13 and a quarter at 10.03 and a half. September spring wheat up 10 and a quarter at 10.51. If you guys are listening on the podcast, appreciate it. Leave me a rating. Leave me a review. If you're watching on YouTube, guys, make sure you subscribe. Uh, leave me a comment. Like the videos. All of those things will help YouTube and its algorithms to spread this stuff out. Help me to grow this thing. Uh, if you need some additional information from me, go to my website, www.standardgrain.com. Check out my premium subscription service today, guys. I send my premium subscribers a ton of information direct from me every single business day. Morning email has been going out about 5.30 a.m. Central. In that email, you'll see every overnight headline you need to be aware aware of tons of charts graphics weather info my daily subscriber only videos are part of this i did one yesterday regarding 2023 corn marketing i've had a ton of questions about this joe should i be marketing the 23 corn crop the 23 soybean crop i went through some uh historical examples of high priced years and looked at um whether or not forward contracting that next year's crop would have been a good idea it's kind of a mixed bag of results but uh certainly an interesting study and i had a lot of uh, good feedback about this if you guys want to see this video sign up today 50 bucks a month cancel at any time no other fee no other obligation nobody will try to sell you anything else i promise let's start off with the inflation trade some say that wall street's inflation trade is unwinding Bloomberg reporting yesterday, Wall Street's great inflation trade is peaking across assets. Uh, bond investors have cut inflation hedges at a very quick pace. Some say that the commodity super cycle is easing. Uh, you have seen some drastic pressure in some commodity markets as of late. Uh, you look at wheat, cotton, canola, gold, silver, copper. Those would all be examples of commodity markets that have softened up drastically over the last uh, couple of months. Energy price is a little bit more sticky. Crude oil is still really strong. Gasoline price is still very high, of course. There's a, an interesting and, and friendly fundamental story there. Nat uh, natural gas has eased from its peak, but I'd probably still argue that that's still a bull market. Seema Shah of Principal Global Investors was quoted in this Bloomberg piece. Uh, she said this, U.S. inflation is likely close to peaking. Consumers are shifting from goods to services while overall demand is slowing. So core goods prices pressures are becoming more deflationary. If this is the case, and I don't know if it is the case, it's not a good thing for commodity markets. Um, I'd probably make the argument that the wheat market, as an example, didn't really have any business trading $13 or $14 a bushel. There was some inflationary money or some outside money that came in and bought a commodity like wheat and some of these other commodities as an inflation hedge. From the outside looking in, if you're a fund manager, if you're somebody on Wall Street, if you're not somebody involved in the commodity markets, you look at what's going on here this year. Uh, the stock market's down 20 plus percent. Uh, bonds are down. There really were not any really good places to hide uh, from what's going on here, but commodities were one of those very few places, and, and commodity markets have returned uh, as an asset class uh, very, very well here in 2022 so far. And if this trade is unwinding, I think that that's a negative for our commodity markets. We've still got a lot of fund length in the in the uh, corn market and in the soybean market also. So if this trend continues and if this is correct, that the big inflation trade is unwinding and the Fed is actually, um, uh, their policies are actually working to tame inflation, that might be a negative for the markets here. So this does tie uh, directly, in my opinion at least, into our corn, soybean, and wheat prices. Uh, here's the weather this morning. There's really not much on the radar. Maybe some scattered stuff over North Dakota, but other than that, kind of dry. Maybe some scattered stuff over Illinois. Next seven days, introducing just a little bit more rainfall, and a lot of this is going to start around the 4th of July is when you're going to start to see some accumulation occur across the Corn Belt. Both the Euro and the GFS kind of indicate that, yeah, these rains return around July 4th. Now, that GFS model in particular is offering uh, quite a bit more rain and started to trend a little wetter at midday yesterday, the way I saw it at least, and offered some pretty decent coverage for a lot of the Corn Belt. And it's kind of in agreement with the government maps here, you know, above normal precipitation in the period from July 4th out through the 12th. And that's what I'm seeing in that GFS model also. It leaves the plains a little bit on the drier side, especially in that extended period. So not perfect. 
The other issue is heat. And uh, we are going to see some warmer temperatures. They're going to roll into the northern plains around the 7th or so is when you're going to see some drastically above normal temperatures in the northern plains around July 7th or 8th. And then by, say, the 10th, 11th, 12th, you're going to see some uh, drastically above normal temperatures in the Corn Belt. And they're going to stick around for a while. So you've got kind of a mixed bag of weather. I mean, maybe above normal precipitation or a decent amount of precipitation across the Corn Belt and key corn and soybean growing areas. But, but this uh, heat is another issue. And when it comes to uh, you know yield potential, when it comes to corn, uh, temperatures and rainfall are important. Uh, most would argue that rainfall is probably the more important factor in July, but both have yield implications. So we'll continue to watch this weather. We do have another three-day weekend coming up, and three-day weekends, of course, are sometimes associated with uh, shifts in the weather models, that sort of thing, and volatility on the reopen. We do have a USDA report tomorrow. This is the planted acreage and quarterly grain stocks report. Traders generally expect a slight increase in corn acreage versus March intentions. We're looking for an additional 370,000 acres of corn uh, relative to March. So 89.86 million is your average trade guess. That would be up from 89 and a half in March. In soybeans, you're expecting a small acreage decline, um, a decline of about, well, I guess half a million, uh, down to 90.44 is the expectation for soybean acreage. So the trade generally expects a a shift uh, into corn out of soybeans versus March intentions. Um, I think that it's it's going to vary drastically uh, depending on geography. In the north, they probably lost some corn acres, maybe picked up some soybean acres. But I think elsewhere, given the uh, the strong performance of new crop corn prices following that survey period, we may have picked up corn acreage elsewhere. But I'll tell you what, there's the, the range of estimates is pretty wide. I think that there's going to be some big miss somewhere here. This stuff is really difficult to predict. The trade predicting a or uh, estimating. Uh, a fairly significant decline in spring wheat acreage versus March intentions. 11.2 uh, was the March number. They're looking for 10.84. So this will be an interesting report. And then you've also got grain stocks, which are very tough to predict for corn in particular, given traders' inability to accurately track feed usage. You know, we get reports for exports and ethanol, but you don't really get a feed report. So that's difficult to track. The range of guesses for uh, corn stocks as of June 1st is like, 400 million bushels wide. The range of guests for soybean stocks is like 300 million bushels wide or more. So uh, that report, the, st- the stocks part of this, has uh, just as big of a potential to surprise as the acreage numbers. This stuff will be out tomorrow morning. I'll talk a little bit more about it tomorrow. Loosening COVID policies in China may have helped to rally the soybean market yesterday. At least that's my thought. Uh, China reduced its quarantine period for inbound travelers to seven days from 14 days previously in many parts of the country. Investors across financial markets saw this as a generally positive sign, although the stock market did ultimately finish the day sharply lower yesterday. Uh, Despite that change, China's President Xi said that China will stick with its COVID zero policy, calling it the most economic and effective policy for China. He said that relaxing COVID controls would risk too many lives and that China would rather endure some temporary impact on the economy. Uh, then let the virus hurt the safety and health of the populations. So these policies, I mean, yeah, it looks like we're going in in, in a loosening type uh, trend right now, but it could very quickly go the other way if uh, virus cases start to surge again. The EU's goal to move 20 million metric tons of grain out of Ukraine by the end of July is probably not possible. Uh, This is not a surprise, but a little bit of an update on the situation. The Polish ag minister told Reuters that the EU's plan to move grain is not feasible and made little progress in implementing the EU and U.S. initiatives to ease logistics problems. Uh, Poland is attempting to move Ukrainian grain by rail as Russia, Russia continues to block seaports. The rail transport system is hugely inefficient. It's only capable of achieving just a fraction of normal export activity. The Polish ag minister also said that President Biden's plan regarding temporary storage at the European border was interesting, but that it lacked any sort of details and a timetable. So uh, no surprise here. This situation is ongoing. A whole bunch of grain stuck in the Ukraine. Cattle market finished the day lower yesterday in live cattle mostly and sharply lower in feeder cattle. Not a great day. Uh, There was a little bit of cash trade to speak of, 137 so far this week in the south, 144 to 146 in the north. In the outside markets, the U.S. dollar is about flat. The S&P is down nine. The Dow Jones down 30. Bonds are up. Gold's up five bucks. Uh, Crude oil is up 86 cents at 112.62 in the August WTI. Have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you tomorrow.